Let's talk about Warhammer the Old World. Hello and welcome back to All Out War. In this video, we will delve into the Orcs and Goblin tribes, Arcane Journal Army List, and review all the units it brings to the table. This tier list is tailored specifically for the Nomadic Wild Army, and I will have another video talking about the Troll Horde soon. If you're looking for a General Ox and Goblin Tribes tier list from the Ravening Horde Army book, you can find it by clicking the link in the description below. Are you ready to take your tabletop wargaming experience to the next level? All Out War Battle Mats can turn your tabletop into a real battlefield. Our battle mats are ready for battle and suitable for war games like Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Horus Heresy, Kill Team, Necromunda, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars Legion, Age of Sigma, Warhammer The Old World, and many many others. Let us help you build your battlefield. Check out alloutwar.com.au, our products are available to all Australian wargamers. After conducting quite a bit of test playing with the Nomadic Wild Army list, I'm keen to share my insights by ranking the unit into four tiers. Beginning with the less effective and concluding with the best, I will provide explanation for the ranking. Please note, the tier list is inherently subjective and my ranking are based on personal experience with the unit. Their placement is influenced by their role and within the overall army composition rather than individual performance. With that said, let's delve into the intricacy of the nomadic wag and explore my thoughts. The Oxen Goblin Tribe's nomadic wag army are designed to have everything moving at top speed. They emphasize on speed and mobility and neutralize a wide variety of fast moving units such as Orc Ball Riders, Wolf Riders, Chariots, and Giant, allowing them to quickly engage and outmaneuver the enemy. The Nomadic Wag army differs from a typical Orcs and Goblin tribes, is that it excludes all Night Goblins, as well as all the units that are on foot, except the Giants. Instead, it introduced new units such as Black Orc Ball Chariots, Badland Ogres, and bone grinder giants. The distinct high speed gameplay style is reflected in the unit choices, tactics, and army wide special rules. Alright, let's break down the five new army special rules. First, we have cunning hunters. All wolf riders can get the ambusher special rule for an additional one point per model. And any characters mounted on a wolf can also get the ambusher special rule for an extra ten points. The next rule is Hunter Packs, which enable the Wolf Riders to replace the Open Order and Skirmisher Special Rules for Close Order and Horde Special Rules. These two special rules work well together, allowing these highly mobile Movement 9 Wolf Riders to appear on the flanks and the rear of the enemy, disrupting their ranks and providing combat bonuses. The next special rule is Hit Them Fast and Hit Them Hard. All the ball riders, including characters on ball mounts, gain impact hits 1 and AP 1 at no additional cost. Additionally, one unit of all ball boys per 1000 points can be upgraded with the Vanguard special rule with just one extra point per model. This special rule is incredibly powerful, significantly enhancing dead damage output for free mitigating the issue with their low weapon skill, making the Orc Ball Boys an essential part of a nomadic wild army in my opinion. The fourth army special rule is on the move. All characters in the nomadic wild army must be mounted, which is quite fitting given their nomadic nature. Lastly, we have the solitary fighter special rule. This rule means that the Black Orc loses the boy and qual impetuosity special rule. This change can significantly impact army composition as dealing with the pesky impetuous special role becomes more challenging without a solid solution. There is a 25 points magic item called the Thinking Orc Hat, which is the only reliable way to mitigate impetuosity in the Nomadic Wag army. Okay, now we have covered the army special role, it's time to delve into the tier list. Just like in my Ravening Horde Oxen Goblin Tribes Army list video, I have categorized the unit into four different tiers. We will discuss their strength and what their position on the list have shifted. 
Kicking off with tier 4, these units aren't exactly my top picks and probably won't feature heavily in my army. Starting with our first unit, the Snotling Pump Wagon remains firmly in tier 4. Priced at 35 points each, it is a light chariot with 2 D6 random movement, D3 plus 1 strength 4 impact hits, toughness 4, and a 6 plus arm save. I think it is too slow to keep up with the army and take up valuable points in the specials choices. With so many other chariot options available in the Nomadic Walk army, I think it will always stay at the bottom of my list for now. Moving onwards and upwards, here are the units I have ranked it in tier 3. Units that I think can have some solid use within the army. The introduction of the new mercenary unit, Badlands Ogre Bulls, priced at 31 points each, marks the first addition to the Nomadic Wild Army list. They are one of the three units on foot. I think this unit complements the Nomadic Wild Army exceptionally well by fulfilling a distinct battlefield role. With high strength, toughness, and multiple wounds, they can serve as a hard heading flankers or charge down the center line as shock troops. Their movement 6 allows them to keep pace with the rest of the army, making them effective for late game support or mopping up remaining enemy forces. Since a nomadic wild army can't take trolls, I think the Badland Ogres can be a good alternative and offer a more budget-friendly, monstrous infantry option for the army. Next up, for 200 points, we have got the Giant, holding its position in Tier 3. It boasts a solid strength of 6, toughness of 6, 6 wounds, and a 6-up arm save. As previously mentioned, the absence of ranked infantry units in the Nomadic Wild list makes outnumbering and breaking enemy unit much more challenging. The Giant's unbreakable special rule becomes crucial in ensuring an enemy unit remains pinned down, allowing chariots and ball boys to set up flank and rear charges to disrupt their ranks. However, one significant downside of this unit is its classification as a rear choice, along with its high costs. It competes with the new Black Orc Chariot, which is arguably the best addition to the Nomadic Wild Army list. On the other hand, the new Bone Grinder Giants can be selected as a mercenary unit, making it far more attractive since it can fulfill a very similar role to the giant with minimal compromise. Taking one giant will still leave me enough points in the rare choice to take two black op chariots in a 2000 point game. I think the combination that I like the most is a normal giant, a bone grinder giant and two black op chariot which comes to around 760 points. This gives me two unbreakable high toughness, multiple wound models to pink unit down and let me set up charges with my ball boys and the chariots. Moving on, we have got the old ball chariot, priced at 90 points and staying in tier 3. It delivers D6 plus 1 strength 5 impact hits, has a 4 plus armor save, and 4 wounds. This chariot serves as a cheaper alternative to the black orc chariots. It does decent damage on the charge and it is reasonably survivable. However, I think the only time I would choose to have a normal Orc Chariot over a Black Orc Chariot are when I am tight on points or if I am opting for a double giant in my list. One thing to note is that an Orc boss can use an Orc Chariot as a mount, making him immune to killing blow. If I am planning to take all boys in the core, I think a normal Orc War Boss General in the Chariot is a great choice. Moving on to Tier 2. Many units have been elevated to this tier. I think these units to be exceptionally strong and expect to see them featured in many Nomadic Walk Army. First up, we have got the Goblin Wolf Chariot making a leap from Tier 3 to Tier 2. They are one of my favorite chariot units in the game. Prized at 53 points, they offer exceptional value with amazing movement 9, Swift Stride, and Strength 5 Impact Hits. Their damage output is unparalleled for their cost. 
in my Ox and Goblin Tribe tier list video, I place it the Orc Ball Boys in tier 4, one tier below the Wolf Chariot, which sparked some heated disagreement. However, I would argue that in most of my game with the Orcs and Goblin Tribes, my Wolf Chariot units has consistently outperformed the Orc Ball Boys at a similar cost. Their D3 plus 1 strength 5 impact hits are reliable and consistently do adequate damage when needed. The Wolf Riders Chariot run a special rule and the Wolf Chariot also synergize perfectly. Coupled with their Movement 9 and Swift Strike special rule, making them my go-to choices every time. In certain situations, Orc Ball Boys have their advantage. They come with a better armor save, the Chopper special rule, and the ability to make counter charges. These traits makes them more resilient and more effective in some scenario. In hindsight, I think both Ball Boys and Wolf Chariot should have been ranked in Tier 3 in my Ox and Goblin tier list. Back to the Nomadic Wild list, since the Wolf Chariot can now be taken as a core choice, if I opt for a Black Orc General, the Wolf Chariot are auto include in every list that I built. The next unit is the Orc Ball Boys making a huge leap from Tier 4 to Tier 2. They comes in at 15 points each with the options to upgrade them to big guns and 3 plus arm save for an additional 4 points. Game Workshop had addressed all the issues I previously had with the Oak Ball Boys, and there are 3 main reasons behind the significant improvement. Firstly, if I take a normal Oak Boss General, one unit of Orc Ball Boys can be taken as a core choice, so they no longer competing with other special choices, but instead use up the core points. Secondly, with the Hit Them Fast and Hit Them Hard special rule, the Ball Boys gain an Impact Hit 1 and AP 1 at no additional cost. This significantly boosts their damage output and helps offset the low weapon skill by providing auto hit impact hits during the charge, making them much more reliable in close combat. Thirdly, the addition of the new magic items, the Thinking Orc Hat, allows its user and the unit he is with to ignore the impetuous special rule. This means I can take a large unit of Orc War Boys without the worry of them being affected by the impetuous special rule, providing greater control in their movement and attacks. I am currently experimenting with two different army lists. One is led by a Black Orc General, which heavily features Black Orc Chariots and Wolf Chariots. The alternative list is led by a normal Orc General with Orc War Boys in the core supported by Giants and Fueler Chariots. Each list had its own strength and weaknesses, and I haven't yet decided which one I preferred. Next in line are the normal Orc Bosses, boosted from Tier 4 to Tier 2. There are a few reasons why I believe the normal Orc Bosses play a more important role in this list. Firstly, with the removal of the quote impetuosity special rule from the Black Orc, including a Black Orc in the army become less crucial. A normal Orc boss offers a more affordable alternative to the Black Orc boss, freeing up character points and allowing for more flexibility in my character selections. Secondly, and perhaps the more importantly, choosing a normal Orc boss as the general allowing one unit of Orc Ball Boys to be taken as a core choice. This elevates the significance of Orc Ball Boys as they no longer have to compete with other special choices in the army list. This shift in their categorization significantly enhanced their role and impacts within the lineup. Next up, we have the Goblin Bosses, holding steady in Tier 2. Priced at 60 points for a war boss and 35 points for a big boss. They offer exceptional value. They can be mounted on a wolf and gain the ambusher special rule for an additional 10 points. Deploying one or two of these goblin bosses with a few units of close order wolf riders can create a significant threat to the opponent's flanks and rear. 
Another great option is to mount the goblin bosses on wolf chariots. This setup is a cost-effective way to improve the chariot with extra wounds and boost their offensive power with additional strength 5 attacks. Both setup makes goblin bosses versatile and valuable additional to my army. The orc bosses, wizards, and goblin bosses all stand out as excellent character choices in the nomadic wild army list. However, their combined point cost can add up quickly, making them quite expensive. Given this, it is worth testing different combination to determine which setup provided best results for your specific playstyles. Next, we have got the Orc Shaman dropping from Tier 1 to Tier 2. The Orc Shamans have access to four distinct rules of magic, the Battle Magic, Elementalism, Wark Magic, and the Lord of Gork. A key reason for their downgrade to Tier 2 is the lack of synergy with the army overall strategies. In the Nomadic Wag army, most units and characters are mounted and geared towards engaging in close combat as quickly as possible. However, the spells in the Law of Gok don't integrate well with this high mobility, melee focus approach. Additionally, the other magical lords don't really deliver a significant impact that complements the aggressive nature of the, of the nomadic wild army. So I think the orc shaman don't quite reach the strategic importance of the goblin counterparts. The final unit in tier 2 is the goblin wolf rider mob. Priced at 10 points per model, they can be upgraded with the faint flight reserve move and ambush special rules for a few extra points. Regarded as the best chaff unit in the list, I think these riders offer amazing value for what they do. As core cool unit, their unmatched mobility makes them incredibly versatile and adaptable. The Goblin Wolf Riders excels in nearly every aspect of the game. They are perfect for harassing enemy units, disrupting formation and blocking advance, all thanks to their superior speed and maneuverability. Their chariot runner special role become particularly prominent in the nomadic wild army, which often features multiple chariots, enhancing their synergy with the rest of the force. Moreover, the wolf riders can form a close order formation, providing extra combat and rank bonuses, which enhance their effectiveness in both offensive and defensive roles. This versatility makes them indispensable in any nomadic wild army list. Finally, we come to the units that are top tier for the nomadic wild army, with the Goblin Shaman claiming a predominant position amongst them. They play a crucial role with their potent magical ability. One of the most powerful tools is Ichi Nusen spell from the Law of Mog. This spell excels in weakening enemy forces perfectly setting the stage for the rest of the army to strike, especially during a well-timed charge. When equipped with the magic item Idol of Gork and mounted on a wolf, these shamans gain an impressive magic threat range. This combination allows them to quickly position themselves on the battlefield, casting their spells from an extended range. Moving on, we have the Bone Grinder Giant. The second new mercenary unit priced at 300 points. This behemoth boasts an impressive stat line featuring strength 7, toughness 6 and 8 wounds. With three special attack table tailored for different target troop types. It plays a similar role to the normal giant but without consuming valuable points in the rare choice category. Although it sports only 6 plus arm safe, its 8 wounds significantly enhance the Bone Grinder Giant's survivability, making it harder to bring down. Combining with its extremely potent damage output, particularly against Art of Behemoth, it poses a formidable threat to the powerful enemy unit like Dragons. This makes it a valuable addition to the army, offering offensive powers against threats that the Nomadic Wild Army often struggle with. In the second place of Tier 1, we have the imposing Black Orc Ball Chariot at 130 points each. 
This new addition to the army boasts an impressive stat line featuring strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds, and D6 plus 1 impact hits. Manned by two black orc crews, armed with either great weapons or additional hand weapons, it presents a formidable threat on the battlefield. But what truly distinguish the Black Orc Ball Chariots are the synergy it shares with the army characters and magic items. I will delve into more details when we talk about the Black Orc bosses next. Finally, we arrive at the pinnacle of the Nomadic Wag army list, which is the formidable Black Orc boss, which continue to hold a top tier position despite some changes. The removal of Qual Impetuosity Special Rule hasn't diminished their value significantly. This unit is still amazing due to its natural good armor save, high initiative, and strong leadership values. These attributes make the Black Orc boss an outstanding combat character, providing a solid combat unit's option for the list. Additionally, choosing a Black Orc boss as the general brings the option to include a black orc chariot as a core choice. This is fantastic as I think this chariot is one of the best addition to the orcs and goblin army. It effectively reduces the core points requirement by 130 points. One drawback of taking a black orc general is shift the orc ball boys back to the special category. I think this trade-off is not terrible because the point that I get to say by having a Black Op Chariot in the core more than compensate for the reclassification of the Orc Ball Boys. Additionally, Black Op bosses can be mounted on a Black Op Chariot when paired with the magic items the Troll Hide Trousers. This setup turns them into an unstoppable forces, able to smash through enemy ranks with devastating effect. Moreover, a Black Orc Big Boss can carry an army battle standard, and when equipped it with a war banner, they provide plus two combat bonuses, making them invaluable in close combat situation. Overall, the Black Orc Boss remains a versatile and potent choices, solidifying their position in the top tier of the army. So, with the top tier stuff talked about, that is the end of the Ox and Goblin Tribe's Nomadic Wag tier list. I will have other tier list video coming soon once we test play the list a bit more. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. If you enjoy the videos, then feel free to subscribe to All Out War YouTube channel and follow us on our Facebook page. You can find the link in the video description. In any case, a massive thanks for listening and I will hope to see you guys next time.